Every year, the Australian Government plans how it will invest and prioritise money over the next four years. In the past five years, Australia has come through the global financial crisis and ongoing global turmoil better than almost every other developed country. Our economy is strong, jobs are growing, inflation, debt and interest rates are low. But our success is a mixed blessing. That stubbornly high Aussie dollar combined with other global pressures is a significant challenge for a lot of our industries. That means they're earning less profits and in turn paying much less in tax dollars than what could have been anticipated or predicted. So we have a choice to make in response to that challenge. Do we cut jobs? Do we cut services we rely on to the bone? Or do we invest in supporting jobs now and creating the jobs of the future? This budget shows a pathway to surplus completely consistent with jobs and growth, while investing in the big reforms that will set Australia up for the future. That's why there's $24 billion for road and rail projects, meaning new jobs and less time wasted in gridlocked traffic, something that could cost us $20 billion a year in lost productivity by 2020. All up 7,500 kilometres of road will be improved. We're also making unprecedented investments in school education because we know that our kids in schools are falling behind. Among similar countries, Australia has gone from second place to seventh place in reading, and from fifth to thirteenth in maths. At the same time, disadvantaged Aussie kids are a full two years behind their classmates in maths, reading and science. To turn it around and be a top five country again, this budget provides an extra $9.8 billion for schools over six years. Money that will be used to train teachers, pay for specialists, and make classes smaller. This budget also brings big changes to how we treat Australians with a disability so that the most vulnerable members of our community are no longer left behind. Right now, the support you receive depends on how you got your disability and where you live. It doesn't make a lot of sense, and it just isn't fair. So this budget funds disability care as a new, permanent and enduring part of our social safety net. A bit like Medicare, which Labor introduced back in 1975. Disability care means people living with significant and permanent disability can finally get the care and support they need. To help pay for disability care, the Medicare levy will go from 1.5% to 2%. To put that into perspective, for someone earning $75,000 a year, that's an extra 96 cents a day. A small contribution that means an awful lot for our fellow Australians who need it most. Budgets are about choices. But they're not really choices about money, they're choices about people. The federal budget is about Australia deciding. Do we want to live in the kind of country that ignores gridlock roads, that turns a blind eye to students struggling to keep up, that leaves people living with a disability on their own? Or do we want to live in a country with a strong and growing economy, where everyone gets a fair go, and where we're investing today for an even brighter future? Authorised by George Wright, ALP Canberra.